All right, guys, I've marked this out. I've got two lines here. I'm going to use a, a cut line that I'll work to and um, a machining line that I need to work to as well. So I want to set this up so I can face it. I can machine a step back onto it to turn it round and then have a register to push up against the jaws when I face the other side. So that's the plan. Let's uh, get this bandsaw up and going. It's going to be a fairly tedious job, so I'm obviously not going to show you the whole show because uh, we're going to be here for a little while getting this cut through. Okay, so I've only got a couple of little corners to take off now and, uh, and we're done. That's taken me just over 20 minutes to, uh, to cut that around there. So that's not too bad, I'm fairly happy with that. Very happy with this bandsaw by the way too, uh, it was a good buy and uh, saves an awful lot of work. Alright, I'll get this, these little uh, corners tipped off and uh, we'll get that set up in the lathe. Okay, we're just going to face this off now. Um, you can see that little mark there where the cutter has started or the, the plasma cutter oxy torch has actually started inside and then moved out before it started cutting the shape so i'm hoping we're going to get that cleaned out okay i want to take the minimum amount off this side so i can take the maximum amount out where the blow through was because that has spread out a little bit so minimum amount off this side i'll take a little bit off the od to get a register turn it around and then we'll, uh, we'll uh, focus on the other side so sort I of hope I'm not going to do this warping too much if we start machining this because uh, plate does tend to relieve a little bit so we'll just have to be mindful of that whilst we're machining. <laughs> right. We'll stop it there because we don't need to face it off any more than we have to. Let's have a look at this. Not too bad. Well, I'm just going to take a little nick on the OD here. We'll just see how that's going to clean up. Gives a bit of an idea if we're going to get this uh, this cut cleaned up as well. I may need to have to put one of the teeth there. Um, issue with that is is that this is going to be reasonably hard. So I might have to get in there with a file. If I do have to put a tooth there, just to remove some of that hard hardened area where that uh, where that lance has gone through. Just going to take another quarter of a mil, and that'll leave me about a millimetre up on it. Um, you can see we're starting to, to um, this gouge mark here, the start of that plasma or oxy cutter is coming out, but it does taper away quite a bit at the back, so hence I want to take as much material off the back to, to get it back to thickness as I can. And we've just started cleaning up here too. So, a quarter of a mil, that'll get it cleaned up, and uh, as I said, we'll leave about a millimetre. All right, guys, we can see where that gas axe has, uh, has cut in. And uh, looking at this now, I reckon I'll get that cleaned out on the OD. But remembering I want to take off, there's about three and a half mil left to come off the face as well. So that will further cut into that as well. Just want to try and get that out because that will be hard. Um, and I don't want to damage the, uh, the gear cutters. So, um, yeah, we'll try and get that right. <laughs> Alright guys, I'm going to take uh, the centre out of this to start boring out to size, as I said we're uh, 0.04 of a mil over 50 mil, and I often find the easiest way to hog metal out is to use one of these um, bimetallic hole saws, so uh, we'll see how we travel with this one. All 
I've been cutting away for about um, 10 minutes. So uh, I think we're almost, uh, almost through, so I thought I'd bring you back. So this is a real tube I got from Aldi. It was only a couple of bucks for this uh, for this set, but uh, I have done hole saw sets drilling out this way or coring out this way up to two and a half inches. So it does take a bit of time when you are doing it, and uh, if you take your time, clear the chips, a bit of lubricant, um, it cuts through. So it was about 20 minutes I reckon to do that hole. Uh, yeah. Just probably just as quick to drill it and then uh, start boring it out, but as I said, on the bigger stuff, on the bigger diameter um, holes, um, they really come into their own. All right, I'll give this a lick with a bore out, uh, with a boring bar, and then uh, we'll continue facing off and get this down to solid. <laughs> Alright, so we've got this side faced off, we've got it bored to size, we've also taken out that little anomaly that we had. I've got about 2 mil still to come off the OD. Um, I'm going to uh, get this mandrel made up, so we can get this mounted on the mandrel, I can get the final OD done. Once I've got that done, I can then flip it around and do the final machining to thickness on the back. But uh, that has come up beautifully, very, very happy with that. Very, very happy indeed. I'm really happy with the uh, performance of this lathe so far. Going very well. All right, guys. Well, I've uh, now faced this back to thickness. We're at 12.05, so we're just a couple of thou over the 12, uh, 12 millimeters what we're looking at. Um, it's pretty even in thickness all the way around. I've got about 0 0.01 of a mil difference uh, right round, so that's pretty well spot on. Bore's all finished off nicely. That's, uh, that's all done. As I said, the next thing we're going to do is I'll make up a mandrel amount this in. And uh, we'll get the OD turned, concentric to the bore. Um, then we'll turn our attention to how we're going to cut a keyway inside here. So uh, I thought I'd jump on here very quickly and show you because it has been absolutely built in town with rain. And uh, you couldn't hear a thing. So uh, I'm going to pack it in for the night. I'm, as I said, very happy with the final result on that. And uh, we'll have another look at this tomorrow morning. Well, right, guys, one of the things I was keen to check on is the um, quality of this chuck. And one of the things or indicators for quality of the chuck is that when you do machine, these jaws, the registering point of these jaws are all dead smack in line. If they're out a little bit, when you machine, the part that you're machining won't be parallel. So I've machined this one up. Let's have a... So it's 12.07. Twelve point oh six. Twelve point oh six. So we're within about point oh one of a mil, you know, one or two tenths of a thou. So very, very happy with the quality of this chuck and those registration faces. So you can be confident when you are facing off and you are butted up against those registration faces that the part you're going to turn is going to be parallel. All right, we'll get this out. Uh, we'll make up a mandrel to fit this. And we'll look at the options we've got, got for cutting the keyway. Just cutting up a bit of stock to uh, make the mandrel out of. I'll try and show this, but this hole has got to be three to four millimeters off center. You can see how the chamfer hasn't cleaned up all the way here. Come around the other side, you can see how deep the chamfer goes there. That's because that hole is so far off center. I'm gonna to have to get that hole trued up because I do want to drill and tap to be able to fit up a, um, a bolt or a stock of a cap screw to clamp the plate on to hold this, uh, this gear in place. So the only I'm going to have to get that trued up. The only way I can think of doing that is to um, 
set up an end mill, maybe a 12 mil end mill or something like that, and just go in there and try and get that, uh, that trued up a little bit better. Anyway, I'll give that a go and we'll see how it pans out. Alright, uh, let's see if we can get this cleaned out with a 12 mil end mill. So at least we get a, a reasonably true hole that I can drill and tap out the M16. Probably cleaned up about two thirds of it and got it trued up. I've got a 14 mil slot drill there I'll put through, get it a little bit better. And we can get it out to a tapping size for an M16. Get that cleaned up, see how much uh, that ball we've got uh, centered up. Right, so I've turned the center up true to the uh, headstock on the lathe. Um, what we can now do is mount the stock into place on that center. Uh, reaching over the camera here, and then we can screw. this into place. So we're going to drive that by friction just to give that a clean up uh, on the OD. So uh, I'll get this all locked away properly first and uh, we'll make a start on it. Guys, I found a bit of um, scrap off cut in my scrap bin. Um, this will be ideal for the uh, for the end cap that we need to make, or the retaining cap for that uh, for that mandrel. So, all I'm going to do, face it off, drill the hole, cut a slight recess back into that, so that we're only holding on the outer diameter, and uh, we'll leave it at that. I think. a 16 mil hole into that, take the burrs off and that's done. Might be pretty but uh, it'll do the job it has to do. Right, oh, let's get this, uh, this thing assembled up. So that's our backing plate we just made up. I've already uh, tapped this out to M16 and even with that little mismatch on the hole it worked out fine. Set up our turning tool and uh, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll shine that ODN at 25, uh, 225.75, I think. Twenty-five point seven five, and there it is. Bang on. I thought I'd just quickly show you my setup for lifting heavy things in and around the shop. I guess. Uh, this dividing head, I can't lift this up at all on my own, so I've got a uh, 
an overhead bridge crane that runs the full width of the bay so I can get access to both lathes and the milling machine. Um, I have an electric hoist on here. Um, use that for coarse stuff, um, even though it's double wired down, uh, it's still fairly coarse when you're dropping things down, so I like to use the chain block. Uh, it makes life a little bit, makes the, uh, the load a little bit more gentle as it's coming down onto the table or, or coming down onto the lathes. But I quickly thought I'd show you that as to uh, how I lift stuff around. Uh, very simple and very easy. All right, guys, this is probably going to be a little bit agricultural, but it'll do the job. Um, you can see the gear blank G clamped onto my uh, rotary table pallet. Now, that rotary table pallet is mounted onto my 8 inch rotary table and it's bolted through under these T bolts in, uh, in three locations. So, what I'm going to do is mount that gear blank onto my rotary table, flip it up at 90 degrees, then put an angle plate behind it to give it the support. And once again, that's driven by the stepper motor through the uh, electronic index. So with it mounted onto the pallet there, I'm going to flip that around, pick up the three holes, and then uh, use a transfer punch to go through, punch onto the back of the, uh, the gear blank, and then we'll drill through. And we'll just give it a little bit of clearance, so I do have a little bit of um, wobble on that if you like to get it centered up onto the uh, onto the rotary table. All right, so I've got this sort of clocked up within three or four tenths of a thou. So I'm happy with that. Very happy with that. All right, let's get this uh, flipped up into the cutting position, and we'll get it uh, stabilized up. Um, Ready to cut our teeth. Yeah. Uh, I'm just looking at an issue here. These clamps are going to be an issue. Well, one clamp is going to be an issue anyway. Possibly, we'll just have to make sure. I'll just bring it across and show you. So I've got this clamp here, as long as my cutter is going to run through here and not foul with this, I'll be okay. But we'll see how we're looking. I did know about that when I did mount this up and it does look like it's off the centre, so I should be okay. Alright, well let's get it sitting up and, uh, and we'll see how things are looking. <laughs> 